Welcome everyone to the first episode of DLC Explained. There are so many obscure topics I could choose from that I had no idea where to start. I kept brainstorming and brainstorming what could possibly be the first topic to address. In fact, I had not even decided who my main audience should be. Should I jump straight into obscure references even some diehard DOT fans wouldn't really know much about? Like the rarely practiced ritual of dot sacrifice? Until I realized, there is a very obvious starting point. Uh, no discussion about DOT could possibly hold much weight if I do not at least touch upon the elephant in the room. That's right, I am talking about... Let us begin with a little thought experiment. For simplicity's sake, let us assume that there is a beginning to our universe, such as the Big Bang, even though that has been under scrutiny lately. And there is a second universe that also has a starting point. Let us align the universal timelines so their corresponding Big Bangs happen simultaneously. Remember, on the other side of a wormhole is Texel. If a human, which I shall name Mr. Abbott Abbott for no particular reason, finds this wormhole, when in that other universe's timeline would he emerge? Would he emerge in the same universal time? What if the Big Bangs did not happen at the same time, would he still emerge in the same universal time? Or would he emerge with that time corrected for any discrepancies in relative creation? If that even makes any sense. I don't think it does. Well anyway, would he simply emerge at any random point in time? Will I ever stop asking rhetorical questions? I actually have an answer to that one, and it's no, because I would still like to pose these follow-up questions. If this so-called Mr. Abbott Abbott decides to stay in this other universe for, say, a century, and then decides to go back through the wormhole, when would he emerge? Would he emerge a century after he initially traveled through the wormhole? Would he emerge immediately after he left, as if nothing had happened? Would he emerge at another random point in time? If you're still with me so far, then I have some good news. There are answers to the, some of these questions, but the answers may not be as simple as you may wish. Turns out that all these questions have conditional answers dependent on which wormhole you go through. That's right, there's more than one wormhole that leads to Texel, and they all behave differently. Turns out that I did not choose Abbott Abbott for no particular reason. In the next episode, I will be discussing the man in more detail, but for the scope of this episode, I would like to simply point out that he was the first human on record to have traveled to the world of Texel. He spent a century documenting his findings and returned to Earth. The wormhole he used to travel to and from Texel is named Yanasset 1, which will later become the same wormhole used by Exos. But those are all stories for a later time. The reason I have for mentioning different wormholes having different properties is because there needs to be a foundation for a general timeline of events before I continue with this series. I consider myself a historian of sorts because the war, from our current perspective, happened from the years 2012 to 2015. However, understanding when exactly the war happened is more complicated. When I say the war happened between the years 2012 and 2015, I mean that some select humans from the years 2012 to 2015 engaged in a war in another world, in another timeline. However, that is from our perspective. When did the war happen in Texas timeline? Has it happened yet? Did it happen millennia ago? What if I told you that humans from the years 2012 and 2015 were not the only ones who part participated in the war, and that the other humans who participated have not been born yet and will most likely not be born during any of our lifetimes? There are intriguing documents that were salvaged from the war that do not seem to have been written by either a Texeli or a Defender. All these documents were written by an honest black guy, and a collection of these documents has been labeled the Junebug Tales. In one of these documents, titled Begin the Begun, we come to find out that a group of individuals have been eyeing Ab Abbott's documents detailing the world of Texel as well as hunting down the location of the Yanase 1 wormhole. Here is an excerpt from the document. Talk about the Tabo talk. Hosplen told the associates, only one, this information to a high degree of certainty. An Anglese named Edwin Abbott Abbott, you're iterating, Hosplen chided. Sporty Rain has a valued wonk, but as her controller, he had to keep the discipline in all things. The will to waste had to be fought at all costs. Untrue, Sporty Rain responded without heat. 
Abe Abe is his correct name. Perhaps the culture valued redundancy. He expired in 1926. Despite the discomfort he caused, Hosblen opened his eyes and peered at Sporty As usual, hers was the only upright figure among the slumping and the supine. That is many bees ago. How many bees in that time? Two. In his time, the world population was two billion. There were sighs around the conference room, almost obscene in their wistfulness. Later in the document, Sporty Rain is described as contemplating her surroundings and thinking. People. People everywhere. How many bees? Fifteen. Fifteen billion, and that was with a dozen wars churning dutifully away, not to mention the floods, hurricanes, earthquakes, and all the ways in which a poisoned, meager world could take its revenge on flesh and bone. So let us get this straight. A man traveled to Texel sometime before the year 1926 through Yanase 1, documented his findings, and returned to Earth. Almost a century later, in the year 2012, humans were chosen and taken to the world of Texel to defend against a mechanized alien invasion. However, this mechanized alien invasion were human-made robots sent through Yanase 1 by humans living during a time when the global population was 15 billion. Last time I checked, there have never been that many humans on Earth before, and current estimates only place the global population at 11 billion by the year 2100. What we are dealing with here is somehow two widely different moments in Earth's history traveling to the world of Texel to the same point in Texeli history. There is no way of knowing whether this war has taken place, is taking place, or will take place, but one thing is for certain, we have access to documents from Abbot Abbott's time, the war's time, and Sporty Rain's time, and I intend on reporting on all of them. Stay tuned for the next episode where I intend on elaborating on who exactly Abbot Abbott was, what he did during his century on Texel, and what happened to his legacy once he returned to Earth.